Welcome to Generations Furniture Restoration and Repair. This video is going to demonstrate my process for repairing a broken rocking chair. As you can see in this image, the front rail on which the chair pivots has snapped in half right behind the joint where the chair meets the rocker arm. In this video, I'm going to show you how to accurately reproduce that rocker rail and reinstall it on the chair. And while making a repair of this kind isn't terribly difficult, it does require a couple of specialized tools as well as a trick or two. One of the first tools you're going to need is a jigsaw of some sort. Whether handheld or table mounted, a jigsaw is indispensable for this kind of repair. You're also going to need a drill bit of some diameter to be determined by the size of the hole you need to drill. Whether a spade bit, a Forstner bit, or your average twist bit, you're not going to get through this project without these. And what good are drill bits without a drill to use them with? This is a very affordable table mounted drill press. I think I paid $35 for it new. Lastly, you're going to need a T bevel. This is used to measure and transfer angles. So, all that being said, let's get started. Well, there wasn't much to removing the rail after all. When I picked the chair up, the rail fell off. So at this point, the most important aspect was to inspect the male plugs to make sure that they were still sound and good enough to reattach to the rail we're going to make. I then laid out the broken pieces of the rail on a new piece of lumber, clamped them down, and traced a pattern. It's extremely important to only use kiln-dried lumber when making the new rail for the rocking chair. If you choose not to use kiln-dried lumber, you run the risk of having the new rocker arm warp or twist as it dries out. After rough cutting out the new rail with the jigsaw, the next step is to determine the correct positioning for the new holes on the new rail. Here I've temporarily clamped the old rail and the new rail together so that it easily and accurately shows me where to place the new holes. Take a close look at the hole on the old rail. You may notice that it is not straight up and down and is not bored at a 90 degree angle. If you were to drill the holes on the new rail at 90 degrees it simply would not fit the chair. I'm going to show you a very simple trick that will enable you to duplicate that angle and drill the holes properly. First, determine the diameter of the hole you need to drill. In this case, it was 3 quarters of an inch. Then I placed my 3 quarter inch Forstner bit into the old hole on the old rail making certain that the sides of the drill bit were in contact with the sides of the hole and that it was completely seated into the bottom of the hole. This easily revealed the angle of the holes I would need to create in the new rail. Using the T-bevel, I measured the angle and then transferred that angle over to the drill press. After installing the drill bit in the drill press, I then used the T-bevel as a guide and adjusted the table of the drill press to the appropriate angle. As a means of double checking my setup, I took the old rail and lowered the drill bit into the old hole to make sure that it fit smoothly and didn't bind. All that was left to do was create two new holes in the new rail. Immediately after drilling the new holes in the rail, I test fit it onto the chair 
to make sure that the chair would indeed rock the way it used to. Finding that it did correctly fit the chair, I continued by shape sanding the new rail and painting it gloss black to match the remainder of the chair. And while the new rail is lacking a little age and a little dirt, I'm sure in no time it will be indistinguishable from the remainder of the chair. Overall, I would consider the repair to be a success, and it should probably last another hundred years. Ta-da! So thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to leave comments or ask questions, I will answer them to the best of my ability. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you can't because I just can't stand those things.